on today's episode. Recently I reviewed this SWR meter, or strictly speaking, the SWR, and it's a fantastic little unit. The only wrinkle with it is that it only goes up to 2.7 gigahertz, of no use in the FPV world where generally speaking we're up on the 5.8 gigahertz band. But all is not lost. Enter a new kid on the block. This meter, specifically designed for testing FPV antennas, is made by OWL RC. This is the version 2 model. Uh, there was a almost a prototype circulating some time ago, but this is the, the latest thing. It's powered by a 12 volt DC input, but rather than powering it from Walmart type supply, they include in the package this XT60 connector so that you can run it off of a three cell LiPo. And that's a much better solution in my view as there's less chance of any interference from the, the power supply. Once we've hooked that up, and switch it on. We can see a nice clear LCD display and that's also touch sensitive. Along the bottom here, this red bar, that changes to green when you fire up the internal transmitter, which is a 200 milliwatt transmitter. It's very, very, very important that you don't power the unit up without an antenna attached. We have here a traditional SMA female type connector. Always keep the protective cover on there, stop any uh, dust or crud getting in there. Let's get a, an antenna attached and then I'll take you through the two modes. Pay special attention when you're fitting the antenna that you've got the right type of connector. Clearly as mentioned this is the, the female SMA. This antenna would be no problem as it is obviously a male. However there are many FPV antennas which are also female in which case you're going to need to get yourself an adapter or a couple of different types. This one is clearly male to male for that type of antenna. For the moment we're good to go with uh, this guy. Finger type should be fine for the for the antennas there. The two modes real-time mode and scan mode Let's go through the scan mode first. The start frequency is 5.645 gigahertz and the end frequency 5.945, so the standard range there. We can set it to auto, in which case it will automatically rescan at the end. Let's do a scan and see what happens. Note that the bar is now turned green and we can see the output trace there. If we tick the track and scan, it will then automatically show you the lowest SWR and the corresponding frequency, in this case 5.905. As I mentioned in the previous video, the environment in which you test the antennas is very important, and I've moved out from my office with all the electrical noise from the equipment I have into another room uh, but preferably as these are designed to be used outside you should be doing your testing outside. Now that we know the best frequency for this particular antenna we can move back to the home screen and then look at the real-time view. So in this mode you can select the particular frequency that is of interest to you and it will give you the values of the forward and reflected voltages in the window there. So if we enable it now, change the frequency to match what the scan found to be the lowest SWR, and again we have a, a real-time graph there. So it's measuring 1.36 on the SWR, and the forward 0.48, and the reverse 0.07. We can see there with the transmitter off, the SWR shows SIG, which perversely means there's no signal. The other indication that you might see is uh, error. When the reflected voltage is actually greater than the forward voltage, uh, how that can arise, I, I know not, but it would obviously be uh, an error. Let's now check a variety of different antennas and see what the meter makes of them. Here we clearly have another cloverleaf style antenna and I've had to use the adapter to connect that. 
be aware that adapters obviously could affect SWR and other, other readings, but they cannot really be avoided in this case. We're going back to our scan mode and scan. We can see that the SWR is pretty much one up until the 5.8, the end of the of the band there. Clearly the cloverleaf omnidirectional style has a very flat response over the entire band. Let's compare that against a different style of antenna. For example, this Eosheen patch antenna. Gives us a reasonably flat SWR apart from in the center where it only goes up to 1.34. But if we compare that against a homebrew antenna, this is one that I made for my EA Sheen goggles. I've also used it on my Hubson FPV transmitter side. Uh, the internals are actually out of uh, an old Wi-Fi antenna. This time we get a, a different result, having a fairly high SWR, 1.7 at the beginning of the band, falling to 1.3 at 5.788, and then from 5.817 to the top of the band, it's reasonably flat and uh, a very low SWR. So clearly this type of antenna when you're choosing uh, the frequency on which to operate, you want to be choosing the frequencies in the higher end of the, of the band. I've often thought that choosing a video transmitter frequency is a bit like trying to pin the tail on the donkey. Uh, you really have no idea where you're going unless you have one of these devices which will enable you to choose the best frequency for a given antenna setup. Clearly, it's also very important that the receiving and the transmitting antennas are closely matched in this regard. Speaking of close matching, so if we compare these two cloverleaf antennas, again, a good consistent result. We swap this guy for its counterpart. So this one is doing slightly better than its uh, than its brother. Extremely flat up until 5.8 gigahertz, and then a very slight rise at the end there, but. Again, very, very flat. Let's test the antenna that came with my Immersion RC power meter. Okay, it may have a slightly high SWR between 1.6 and nearly 1.8 at the end of the band there, but it is quite flat across the range. Another use is, as I showed using the other SWR meter down in the 2.4 gigahertz band, if you found this antenna just lying around in a drawer, you wouldn't perhaps know, because there's no marking, uh, what frequency it's actually on. So we can clearly see that it is a 5.8 gigahertz an antenna, no problem. What about this guy that looks pretty much identical? SWR not available. 
we clearly are dealing with a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. If we in fact go back and look at the real-time analysis, we can see that the SWR is uh, at the maximum 9.99, so clearly it's not resonating within the SPV band and is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. I think you'll agree it's an extremely useful device. Clearly it's only measuring the SWR, which is only one of the parameters for selecting antennas. The other SWR meter was able to measure things like S11 and impedance, which are obviously important to know as well, but this is fine for the uh, purpose for which it was intended. Other observations, uh, let the unit warm up with the transmitter on for a couple of minutes before starting your tests. That way you'll get greater accuracy. Clearly it can cause interference to other devices nearby, so you, want, you don't want to be using this at the field. And finally, here is a result for one of the popular Pagoda type antennas. This one happens to be right hand circularly polarized, but you can see the nice flat response there. In the documentation for the unit, there's some very good information as well. This clearly is similar to the Pagoda that we've just tested and to the, to the Cloverleaf and antennas in this pattern adapts for most frequency, good for multi-flyer. So if you're not sure what frequency you're going to be on, if you're in, like in a race environment, then this is the antenna for you. Something that's more selective has a, an SWR at a more determined frequency. Antennas in this pattern work only on a few frequencies good for fixed channel flying and possibly for things like long distance. Also in the manual, some excellent advice here on the choice of antennas. We highly recommend an omni antenna or polarized antenna plus a patch antenna combination. This can cover close and long range flying in most circumstances. Cloverleaf uh, pagoda antennas, good gain, perfect radiation, no dead zones, but easy to get damaged. Uh, after a crash. Remembering that the, the tolerances are very fine. If you've tried to design one of these or build one of these antennas yourself, you've got to be within 0.1 of a millimeter at least of, uh, of the correct distances and, uh, and lengths of cables, etc. Patch antennas, excellent gain, narrow radiation pattern, but good for long range flying. We've seen that with the EA Sheen and uh, with my own homebrew antenna. For the receiver, the cloverleaf circularly polarized plus the patch antenna. For the transmitter, a stick antenna is good for racing, gate or open field with no obstacles. Uh, the cloverleaf is good for freestyle, woods or any complex terrain. And the stick patch is good for aerial photo and long range flying. So some excellent advice there. In summary, I'm very grateful to Banggood for sending me this unit for evaluation. It's going to be an invaluable addition to my armory. As I said before, unless you've characterized your antennas correctly and know what type of environment and what type of flying you're going to be doing, antenna choice is going to be like pinning the tail on the donkey. You'll just be flying blind.